Hey guys, and welcome back. Today I'm gonna to give you a garden tour of what my garden looks like after being gone for 16 days in Costa Rica. I went there last year at the first part of September and we fell in love with it. So we went back this year and we took my son, my grandson, and we still absolutely love it that we looked for homes there. That being said, if you are interested in kind of seeing what Costa Rica is all about, I will share what I did tape over there. Otherwise, I'll keep that as my own personal records. But my whole point to that is that while I was gone last year in the early part of September, came back in the middle part of September, my yard looked pretty darn amazing. I was actually super surprised how well it looked especially because I had just put in my irrigation system last year. This year, of course, we went at the beginning of August and now we're kind of in the middle of August and my yard is a whole different situation. Now in the Pacific Northwest, when you reach 109, at least from my experience, I can only speak from my experience, but when we reach high temperatures like 105 to 110 degrees, our plants here can get mildew, they can fry. Some will do really good depending on the care of your plants. So I'm gonna show you all that of how my plant survived with my irrigation system this time. What went wrong? What sustained some burns? And what things were just super amazing and surprising? as well as what sustained some damage beyond repair, perhaps. So with that, you guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video and let's just dive right into it. Well, I'm facing you in this side because I wanted to show you the difference between this container right over here and these two containers. These two containers have some geraniums, a uh, coral bell, and then some creeping gen and that container is doing fantastic. There's no damage whatsoever from the heat. It's just doing really great. Other than it didn't uh, really bloom a lot as far as the geranium, but outside of that, the foliage looks beautiful. In this one, the geranium uh, did sustain some um, burns around each of the leaves, but overall, it still got really big, didn't flower. I think these need more sun for them to flower than they get. But nevertheless, everything in there is still doing well. Now I did bottom feed that before I left and it is getting a drip, a very small drip from my irrigation on these two. Didn't have anything in the small ones, so. But this container, which is my self-watering container, and the one thing that I mentioned on my previous video on how I could fill out that reservoir and it was good to go for two months, so it was the least of my worries. Well, let me tell you, that one is the one that just really... So I'm gonna bring you really close. But as you can see, the geranium, which I believe is a sherry tart right here, that's doing really well, surprisingly. And then I have a Zolo, that variegated leaf there, that's a Zolo Vancouver geranium. That's doing equally as good. The spike are okay, they're whimpering, but they're doing okay. And then as you can see, the coral bell, which is the red here, that is like, half dead, half alive, but I think if I clean it up, it'll be just perfectly fine. But all of the Lamium Silver Beacon that you see that's all dried up, that's that's the goner. That one, I think either I didn't fill it up with water entirely, or it's just facing the sun and it just couldn't handle that 109 to 90 degree weather while I was gone. But that's okay because I look at this as a positive thing rather than a negative because it gives me the opportunity to do something for the fall in this container. And then next spring, I'll do something entirely different and that's gonna be really good as well. So 
I like to look at things a little bit in the positive side of things if there's such a doom thing to be looked at. Everything else, I'm gonna turn the camera around and I'm gonna point things out because my two mimosa trees up here really shed and oh, they just like throw crap on you and it doesn't make my yard very pretty when that happens and it always happens around this time of the year. Now I did clip a big amount away from the yard but the wind still blows, things still get really messy. So I wanted to show you just how ugly my yard can look like if I didn't maintain it on a regular basis because of this tree. So this is the worst that I've seen my garden look in a long time. Okay, so on this side of the yard, I just have to basically really just clean up and sweep up all of this uh, dead stuff that this mimosa tree, look at this, this is what I'm talking about. I just need to pick up all this dead stuff that it keeps tossing down on the ground and on my plant. So I just need to do that. The sedum stone crop here, um, that is still gorgeous. It's looking absolutely great, but it's done blooming. And these are just the seed pods. It really does bring some winter interest. So sometimes I like to leave that until the spring. Sometimes I clip it, I might do it further down. But for now, you know, it just needs to be cleaned up and get rid of all this crap. Uh, let's see, my stargazer lily here is done blooming and missed out on all the blooms, but that's okay. It still looks really healthy. Everything here, to be honest with you guys, looks really healthy because it was being watered really, really well. My Jupiter's beard over here, I think I'm gonna pull this one out um, because they do tend to flop if they're not strong enough or if they're not kind of propped up. So I'm gonna pull that one out. I don't really need it anyway. My stone crop sedium over here uh, looks pretty amazing uh, by itself. The one thing that I noticed about is that Brenner's, when you have a messy tree, they're not the best because this is like, this is almost like uh, cotton. And so my Brenner's are very rough textured. So it almost sticks on them. And so it's, you, it's not that easy to clean off as you can see. Well, I guess it isn't that bad, but you know what I mean. And so, yeah. The one thing that I thought was uh, gonna be a doomsday was because it was hidden and not a lot of sun coming to it was my uh, anemone over here. That one actually is going to bloom. So that was a really nice surprise to see. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's still not getting the proper sun, but it's getting enough that the foliage looks healthy, the flowers look like they're gonna bloom. So that's a good sign. But they're looking amazing, everything looking amazing here. I did deadhead both of my Jupiter's uh, beard here, but had I not done that, I wouldn't have all these beautiful blooms right now. They, I'd end up with having a lot of this, which is uh, just the finished product of, uh, of a bloom. So I can still deadhead this. It'll get another flush of blooms. My lilies, still doing amazing. I haven't had any dead foliage. Uh, both of my hot lip sylvia, they've grown because of all the water that they're getting and because they got a lot of sun. Um, I don't know what is growing here. I'm gonna leave this because it, I don't know if it's a weed or not. If you guys know what this is, let me know. I did put some Transensia Purple Heart in here before I left and that's going to be amazing. It's gonna droop over this next spring. So I'm really happy with that. This did sustain some heat damage, but overall, it still looks pretty amazing. I did put it in a drip uh, meter before I left. Uh, I, I'm gonna see if I can pull it out for you guys. 
and then I added some mulch on top of it to help retain that moisture so you can see that there's moisture underneath there. So I put an irrigation hose that has like this, a, a drip meter every six inches. So I did put that and I intertwined it around a few times. So that's keeping that nice and moist. So that really has helped this along. Had I not done that, this would have been dried up and sustained a lot more damage. So giving your plants plenty of water to keep them hydrated really does help with hot weather. So keep that in mind. My uh, corner grass is doing really wonderful, getting big. Then my sedium container here, I call it my little Jurassic Park here. Uh, you know, I just need to really clean this crap off and then it'll do fine. My wild rose hair bloom, so that's really, really pretty. Isn't that beautiful? And so uh, that's good to see. My uh, ruby slipper that's turning its colors. But again, this is getting really crapped on. I don't know if this was a great idea to place it here, but it's grown a lot and, and it's still doing pretty um, under the circumstances. Before I left, I actually added a lot of soil and some mulch. So uh, it looks pretty good outside of the fact that it looks like something is digging in my yard, uh, especially over here. Uh, really digging down below. I'm gonna guess it's squirrels because it is getting to be around that time of the year. Now, the nice thing about adding the mulch before I left is the fact that my Heucharis over here are doing pretty amazing. Um, and you can see the red color that they, if they get full, full sun, these are this color. The whole plant is this red. So I absolutely love it. But you can see that something is really digging in. So rather than uh, taking these up from the ground and reburying them i just add more dirt because i'm gonna do that anyway and it also has helped a lot with my spot ons these are looking absolutely gorgeous of course i do have a drip and i see that ivy is growing over here so i gotta clean that up this tree which is my cherokee brave Last time we got, I think it was a couple years ago, we got a hundred and some degree, I think it was 110 degrees or 105. This sustained so much damage. I mean, it fried it. And this year it looks really healthy. And I think a lot of it is just because I have my drip irrigation all around it and it's keeping it well hydrated. But clearly it's, it's getting choked by some ivy so i need to come and you see that that's horrible i've never seen that before so i gotta clean that up and yeah everything here looks really great now you can see look at how gorgeous remember i said on one of my videos how the leaves turn this pink color isn't that the most beautiful bloom you've ever seen that is gorgeous in spite of it having all this excess crap on it 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 looks beautiful oak leaf hydrangea this is one of my pride and joys it did sustain some burns but overall still doing fantastic my rose bush before i left i took out all the dead blooms you can see now that it's rebloomed looking great i'm telling you guys irrigation and having consistent water on your plant really makes a big huge difference like i mentioned a couple years ago we had 105 110 degrees and it really burnt my plants and i think a lot of it had to do with the fact that i was not giving them as much water as they're getting now that i have an irrigation system so if you can get an irrigation system put in place, especially if you live in a hot climate area 
oh my gosh, you will be thankful for doing it. So anyway, that's all I have to say about that. Over on this side, I have my bee balm. And do you see anything that's wrong with that? It looks like it has sustained a lot of mildew. And I just, I've never seen this ever happen before. It looks like it may even have some spider mites on it. So I do need to treat it for next year. It, it really, in real life, it looks really sad. But looking at it through the camera, it really kind of looks artistic and kind of has a beauty of its own. But if you look at really close, look at how horrible that looks. But yeah, in a, the same time, it kind of looks kind of cool. I don't know, what do you guys think? The only thing about this whole bee balm is that I've grown it for quite a few years. They have really great medicinal purposes. I, I love it for so many reasons, but I've never known my bee balm to ever have clean stocks like this. Maybe that's just the way this particular bee balm is, but yeah. But look at, this is my butterfly orange skipper. This is the one that I just newly planted. Look at how gorgeous that is. And it's doing really, really well. I mean, the foliage looks healthy. The stalks look healthy. The bees are enjoying it. And uh, it's just doing really great. Now, my, uh, what do you call it? So lavender looks healthy overall, other than it's been crapped on. Uh, it's got a lot of seeds. I've never seen it with that many seeds. So yeah, I'm gonna harvest those seeds and see if I can't grow some more of this lavender because it does smell really well. And then this one here is a, um, I believe it's a sombrero echinacea and these need to be uh, topped off, but they do add for some good winter uh, fall interest, but to have more blooms, it's best to clip them off. So overall, it looks pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, let's see. Going further here, my uh, hardy fuchsia here. Overall, it's doing fine too. Here is my gorgeous Delia de Sol. And obviously, it bloomed a lot, so I need to... Uh, clip and deadhead a lot of that it did sustain some sun damage on it but overall it's doing pretty good it has more bulbs on it so I just need to deadhead it and it should be okay uh, it's got some blooms on it which is nice to see and then my other just so uh, look at how strong that stem is and I've got some flowers in here which I do need to probably deadhead and prop that up. Did sustain a little bit of sun damage, but not a whole lot. This here is my purple heart. And when I planted it, it was doing great. And then it went into shock. So I thought I was going to lose it because they were getting a little bit too much water. So I reduced the drip on it and put just this little quarter inch soaker hose on them because these are very drought tolerant. They don't really need a lot of water. Uh, they did get fried, it looks like, from the sun. But outside of that, they actually have grown and they're doing overall pretty good. And uh, I'm pretty happy. But if you recall, when I, when I planted this, that I had mentioned that if they get some shade, that they will turn green. Do you see the green on it? That's what I'm talking about. If they get a lot of sun exposure, they stay really purple. Uh, so, uh, this is getting some shade now because of uh, all the foliage around it. So, it's got some green, but I kind of like that variegation. Uh, I like that. Everything else is getting well watered. You know, not too sad about how my lilies are doing because, you know, I cleaned them up fairly well before I left and they're still doing okay. My Japanese maple tree is doing fine. But look at this Bishop Delius. This is everything that I kind of divided in the spring. Look at how amazing that looked. It just exploded. Oh my gosh. 
all of the plants that were just really small back here. I had two, two plants over here that were kind of falling a little behind on growth because they're kind of more tucked in the back and not enough sun. But look at them now. Oh my God, this is gorgeous. And I did clean this up before I left. This is what's interesting about this Bishop Dahlia though. This Bishop Dahlia, when it's done blooming, it looks like this. But when it is going to be blooming like this, and it almost looks like it's done blooming, but it isn't. It's just coming into bloom. Now this one looks like it's trying to come back into bloom, but then it didn't quite make it. So it's really hard to deadhead these because sometimes you think that it's a dead, already dead bloom, but it's just coming into life. So I tend to just kind of let it do its thing because it really doesn't need to be deadhead. It still blooms gorgeous. And I just absolutely love this Bishop Dahlia. It's really protecting my Brenra. This Brenra is getting giant now. Every year for the past few years, it just didn't do us great because it was getting too much sun exposure. These like shade. And now it's getting the proper shade and protection. And it just looks beautiful. And this is uh, my garden where I planted a few uh, plants. I did the yarrow. It's looking healthy and beautiful. I did some little gem, little Jenny. I don't, I, Jen, Jenny. And this looked like it wasn't going to make it. And look at, look how beautiful it's looking. It's nice and green and beautiful. This is my lions here. It's grown. Uh, the flowers, you know, are kind of withered and dying because it is probably around that time of the year. But, oh, this is going to be gorgeous next year. I can't wait to see all the growth. Something is severely eating my hosta here. Look like it sustained some sun damage uh, from the heat. But something definitely is eating this, and I don't know what it is. This is terrible. I don't see... Oh, I do see some aphids or some... Some kind of bug. Do you see that? Maybe spider mites. Um, yeah, I gotta, I gotta take care of that one. My Kona grass is doing really well here. I do see that somebody's digging around here as well. So, but they're doing great. My Millennium is now pretty much in full bloom. It's doing fantastic. Do you see how the foliage is? It's nice and upright. I love that. And so, yeah, bring this over here. But it's everything here is getting properly watered. Even though all these are getting more moisture than they typically need because these are very drought tolerant. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about like the yarrow and the uh, lion's ear and even the little... Uh, Jenny here and then this one here I forget what was it what was it that I put here I forget I'll put the name down but even that looks really healthy so good to see that everything here is doing great again my Jupiter spirit look at look at my grape hyson look at how gorgeous that foliage is and this is going to do just fine my Spanish lavender over here needs to be pulled out. It really went to seed and it actually looks like it sustained a lot of damage from the sun. But everything else here looks really relatively healthy and big. Oh my gosh, what watering doesn't do for plants. Oh my gosh, it just exploded them. And here's my Boulevard Clematis. Now my Chasta daisies over here. Uh, or crazy daisies, as somebody put it. Um, the foliage looks really healthy. They are getting uh, another flush of blooms. So I just need to deadhead those and I will get more flowers. But uh, they're doing great in spite of the dead flowers. Um, but everything here, my Miss Piggy's doing fantastic. The 
best I've ever seen it in the last few years that I've had it. And it's a lot of that has to do with the fact that these are getting more shade now. If it weren't for the shade, these would look pretty fried. They'd look a lot like this. But on both sides, they're doing fantastic. And then over here, I have my butterfly shrub, which I call a tree because I, this has to be at least 12 feet tall. And it's gotten a lot of growth, but doesn't look like it got any sun damage, but it just exploded. I'm telling you, everything in my yard looks like it exploded while I was gone. And I wasn't expecting that. Um, I was really expecting more of the foliage to be dried and, and just fried. And one thing about butterfly uh, shrubs, they don't like a lot of water. When you give them too much water, they get really yellow leaves. That's something I've noticed, at least with mine. That's kind of what happens. But overall, it looks healthy. I do need to deadhead it and trim back a little bit. I'll say, um, I do have mildew on my rose bush here. You know, I just need to spray it, cut it back a little bit and spray it. But everything else seems to be doing great. My fern over here is doing really good. I am still going to do a video on ferns and the care of them. So, um, you know, don't give up on me on that. I will be doing it, but I'm going to do it in the springtime. For those that wanted to know about ferns, um, this one didn't sustain any sun damage because it looks like it's being well protected by the uh, butterfly shrub over there. And it's got a lot of new growth, which is beautiful to see. But the one thing that I can tell you is that when you trim them, you trim them in the springtime. And also, I have not had any of my ferns multiply. However, supposedly they do but in my yard they haven't flowering maple over here flowering doing beautiful and gorgeous so i'm not worried about that i do have some weeds and let me tell you i do not hardly ever get weeds in my yard hardly ever and now i've got some weeds and the reason for that is because most of my garden is a no dig garden it's been topsoiled over the many years and then planted with that topsoil uh, so i've never really disturbed the native soil throughout the years everything here in my shade garden is doing absolutely fantastic and i absolutely am happy about it now the one thing is this butterfly tree i call it a tree it's a shrub but whatever you know, um, it's done blooming for the most part, but I think what I wanna do is I wanna pull out this butterfly shrub and place it right over here and then get rid of this part. I love the way it makes this whole wooded area looking gorgeous, but at the same time, this thing is so old that it's just going to fall over the winter months and it's going to sustain a lot of damage because of this. Watch this. See how that? That's just rotted. It's just rotted and it's going to go. So before it actually falls on my plants, I think I'm going to have to take it down. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but it definitely is going to open this way up and it's going to be a sad day but it's something I have to do. And uh, right now it does need to be deadhead and raised up a little bit, but it's a beautiful, beautiful butterfly shrub. And I love, I absolutely love the color of it. I've, I'm yet to see one that's color in the market. But everything else is doing great. My Brenner is getting huge. Look at how big that is. It's gorgeous. It could be divided, but I'm gonna leave it alone. I love the the width of it. I think this is an afterglow, but I, I can't know for sure because I've had these three hostas over here. I believe this is a blue angel. Um, from what I understand of about blue angels is that they 
are kind of a heart shape. Now the Eden Hostas are the same way, although they are more rounded tips and this is a pointed tip. So um, I'm gonna guess that this is a blue angel and it's a giant. I love it. But these three hostas I had here for quite a few years, that is a guacamole. Uh, the whirlwind is uh, fairly new. I absolutely love the foliage on that. Look at how beautiful that center white is. It's just absolutely gorgeous. I love it. And that's in a container. And I can't remember these two. I'll put down the name on the screen because it escapes me. These are doing really great this year. And then uh, on this side, everything is looking really healthy, beautiful, sustained no damage. We'll talk about the Epimedium over here, as well as this plant and one other one in another video because those I still yet to plant. But uh, I do have a Sherry Tart Epimedium over here that I showed earlier and everything here is looks really healthy. Here's another blue angel. This one uh, kind of trails behind as old as it is because it's in a deeper shade, but it's finally getting some growth and I love it. This I think is also another afterglow. Uh, this one here kind of looks different what it normally does because losing that limb on my butterfly tree really caused this to have a lot of heat damage but it's still doing great so i'm okay with it and this one is also very old my sediums they're very strong they don't uh flop at all and they're going to bloom and they're gorgeous i absolutely look at this variegated leaf it, this is just one of my favorite ones and i don't know the names because i've had them here for quite a few years i doubt that i'll find the tags because i've like i said i've had them here for several years and this is shaded but it gets morning sun and look they're blooming this one's supposed to be red this is the most bloom i've seen on any of these in the several years that i've had them but they're doing really great uh that's gonna do it for the front i will tag uh a backyard garden tour of after vacation on the next video so keep an eye out for that but uh this is what my yard looks like. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.